Hello everyone and welcome to Creating with Class. That's crafty lessons and simple steps with Linda Wirt. Hi, I'm Linda and today I will be showing you how to make a table or grid using Design Space. I used my table in order to make my own project board so I can keep track of the different projects that I would like to do in my craft room. You could use this same technique for making a chore chart, a checkoff list, a to-do list, anything that you'd like where you, you are interested in having a, a boxes or a grid or a table. So let's get started. We're going to get into design space first. Next, we're going to come over here to the shapes and we're going to actually choose a square. And we're going to use a square in order to make our line. To do that, we're going to unclick the lock and then we're going to take this and we're going to bring it up and then you can make it as long as you'd like. If you know the width of the object that you're going to be putting this on, you can actually go up here and actually put that in instead of guessing. And then I liked the height that I had uh, previously, which was one, two, five. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that up. So that is the first line in my grid is the top line. So now I need to determine how many rows do I want in my table. So I want six sections that I can write in. So I need a total of seven horizontal lines. So I'm going to come over here to the duplicate and I'm going to duplicate it six more times. So I have a total of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to highlight all of them. I'm going to come up here to the align button and align it to the left. Okay, so now I, want, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces, right, for my table horizontally. But if you notice, they're very small spaces. So I need to make them larger so then I can write on them. So I'm going to take this last line and I'm going to bring it down. And I'm going to see how large that space now is going to be. So if I highlight the whole thing and let go, it's going to tell me my shape size is now 8.2 by 7.014. So that's a pretty good uh, height because my board is going to allow me to um, have ample space to put a title at the top. So I actually like this size. So I'm going to go with that and I'm going to come up here to a line and I'm going to click on distribute vertically. When you click on distribute vertically, just like the picture shows, it's now going to take everything in that group and distribute it vertically. So I'm going to click that and it gives me all of my lines in my table with the spaces in between. Now I need to create the sides of my table or the lines going vertically. So I'm going to go ahead and click this first line at the top and I'm going to hit duplicate. I'm now going to rotate that to 90 degrees. I'm going to bring it over here. So I have the same thickness line, but obviously I need it to be longer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group all of my horizontal lines so I don't lose them. And I'm going to group those. Okay. Now this line I need to make longer. So I'm going to hit the unlock button and I'm going to check what was the height of this box and it was 8.208. So I'm going to come up to this line and make the height 8.208. And now that gives me the line the exact same length as my box. So I'm going to hit the lock and obviously I need more than one line to make my table. So I need two more lines because I want one for this side and then another one to make a section for me to put my months for my project board. So I'm going to come over here, hit duplicate two more times. I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to align them to the top. Okay. So now I have all three lines the same length running vertically for my table. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to bring it right all the way over to the edge and I'm going to bring the next one over and you can make this whatever size section you would like. So I'm going to uh, move it in just a bit. And then I have my end one. 
Now, as you're moving them, you're probably going to be adjusting them up and down and they won't exactly be even anymore. So I'm going to select my grid with my horizontal lines and hide it. So then I can go back and highlight my vertical lines, hit a line. I'm going to line them to the top just to make sure that they're all even. Now I'm going to go ahead and group them so they don't move on me. I'm going to go back and ungroup my other lines and I'm going to take this group that has my vertical lines and the horizontal lines and I'm going to put them one on top of each other but I'm going to highlight them both. I'm going to hit a line and I'm going to hit center and that lines them up perfectly. Now that I have them crossed perfectly, nothing hanging over the edges, I'm going to go to the bottom right hand corner of my layers panel and click weld. By doing that, that gives me one giant table. Now I'm going to write the words for the different months of my project chart and going to put those into these squares here. So I'm going to come over here and hit the text. And for my chart, I'm putting in the months, but it could be names of your children. It could be different chores or tasks that need to be completed on this chart. So whatever you need to put into these squares, you're going to create a text box and type that in. I think I'm going to try a different font. So I'm going to come up here to the fonts. I want something where it's a little bit more compressed. So in the past, I've used um, Dom Casual that I like and see how it brought it in a little bit better. So we're going to bring it over here and see how it works. It's just a little bit still too big, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. See how that works. Yeah, I like that. So that's a good size, and it's important to remember the size of it. So it's 1.406 by 0 0.851. So I'm going to now go ahead and I'm going to duplicate that, bring it over here, double click it, and now I'm going to change it to February. I'm going to hit that unlock button, come up here to the width, which we said was 1.406, and we said the height was 0.8. 5, 1, hit enter, hit lock, and now that's the exact same size as the January. Now I'm going to do this for each section that I would like to label on my chart. So I can hit duplicate. I can now change whatever I want in that box, hit the unlock, and then actually type in the dimensions so they are equal from one box on top of the other. It just makes it a little bit easier to read when you're looking down. You don't have to have the exact same sizes, but I just find it's a little bit more consistent and easier for your, on your eyes when you're looking down the chart. So you can duplicate, or the other thing is you can just come over to text. It will keep, uh, Cricut Design Space will keep the same font that you chose. Uh, so, and just have to unlock it come up here, adjust the size. That is the one thing you're going to have to do consistently if you want them all to be the same size fitting into your squares. But you can do either method will work. You can either hit the duplicate button or you can just create a new text box. Whichever you prefer doesn't matter. They both accomplish the same thing. And that's what you'll notice in Design Space. There's more than one way to get something done. So whatever makes it easier for you, I say continue with that. That's why you'll see so many different videos and so many different ways to do the exact same thing. It's whatever you prefer. Um, the end result you know, is going to be the same. Now this one has a few more letters, but I still want it the same width and height. So I'm just going to ignore that it has more letters than the other. I'm just still going to put in the same dimensions because I want it, like I said, to be consistent to your eye when you're looking. So that should be able to fit, whoops, right in here. Great. All right, so now I have all of my months. And what I want to do is I want to hide my grid for a moment because I want to highlight 
just my months, and I'm going to hit a line center horizontally. This way I can make sure that they're completely one on top of the other. Then I can open up my grid, and I really like the way that looks. So I'm going to highlight the whole thing, and then I'm going to group that together. So now as I'm working, I can move it around my Design Space Canvas. Lastly, I want to put a title on my project board. So I'm going to come over here to the text box. And like I said, my table is for projects for the first half of the year. So I went ahead and I typed the word projects and get that out of the way there. And I'm going to put that right up on top. And to be consistent, I think I might want to try to see if I can get the same height as the others. So I'm going to just change that quickly so I can have it consistent with the rest of the board. Now, if you remember the picture of my table, I had a couple little embellishments on either side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into images and I had a vine border that I was using on either side of the word projects. So you'll see there's a whole bunch of different ones you can choose from. Um, some of them have you know, more intricate designs than others. You can make it as fancy as you would like. You can try searching the word flourish. Uh, anything that you find interesting that catches your eye that you would like to go ahead and use as an accent, you can choose right here. If you don't like that, like I said, you can choose other words to search. Um, I'm not finding anything I like right there, so now I'm going to put in Vine Branch instead. Ah, I like these much better especially this one. So I'm going to try using this one. I'm going to hit select it, then hit insert image. I'm going to bring it into my project here. And now I'm going to rotate that. Play with that a little so it looks a little pretty. And if I like the way that is, and I want to make sure I have a mirror image on the other side, I'm just going to click uh, duplicate first bring that over here and then I'm going to hit flip horizontal and it flips it for me. So now I don't have to worry about do I have it the exact same angle as the other side. And there you go. Now I would just go ahead if I was cutting everything out of the same color I would go ahead and attach everything and then send it to my Cricut and cut it out of permanent vinyl, removable vinyl, um, iron on if you're putting it on like a flag or a piece of cloth, uh, whatever you would like. So hopefully this has helped you come up with some ideas of how you could use this particular technique in creating a table, grid, or chart uh, for your project. Once again, it can be used in many ways. It's the same technique about using the shape of a square, creating lines, and then aligning them and welding them together. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please click on the subscribe button so you'll be alerted of any upcoming videos. And if you have any more questions, please put them in my Facebook group called Cricut for Crafters, Makers and More with Linda Wirt. Until next time, thank you.